viewers welcome you all to the marine thing youtube channel sharing maritime knowledge so guys in this video we will be talking about maritime talks hashtag 9 means the ninth episode of our series of maritime talks where we talk about mar maritime happenings all over the world in this week so guys without wasting any time let's get started into and jump our first news and the first news is IMB 77 seafarers taken hostage since January. It's a very big number, guys. Violent attacks against ships and their crews have risen in 2020 with 77 seafarers taken hostage or kidnapped for ransom since January. The ICC International Maritime Bureau said in its latest piracy report. The Gulf of Guinea of West Africa is increasingly dangerous for the commercial shipping accounting for just over 90% of maritime kidnappings worldwide. In total, IMB's Piracy Reporting Center recorded 98 incidents of piracy and armed robbery in the first half of 2020, up from 78 in quarter 2, 2019. The increasing threat of piracy adds to hardship already faced by hundreds of thousands of seafarers working beyond their contractual periods due to COVID-19 restriction on crew rotation and international travel. Violence against crews is a growing risk in a work a workforce already under immense pressure. So guys, moving further, the second news we have is the COVID-19 cases confirmed on two US flagships, Hapaglolite. Hapaglolite has announced positive COVID-19 cases on board two of its US flagships. The German container shipping group said the cases were confirmed on the Philadelphia Express and St. Louis Express, both deployed on its Atlantic Loop 3 mm -hmm. service. One member on each vessel tested positive for COVID-19, the company said. The mariners are quarantined and we are hoping for a speedy recovery. All other crew members on the vessel are being isolated monitored and will be tested as well, Hapek Lawlet's statement said. We are currently evaluating any potential impact on vessel and cargo operations and berthing dates for the subsequent ports of the rotation will be adjusted accordingly, it added. Moving further guys, if you are not following in Instagram of marainsingh.com, you are missing a major chunk of maritime news and podcasts. So make sure that you are following marainsingh.com in the Instagram. I will be putting out the link in the description below. Go and check it out and follow us on Instagram. Moving further guys, the next uh, news we have is the Norwegian car carrier collided with Korean submarine. On July 17, Korean media reported minor collision between car carrier Hoi London and Korean Navy submarine which took place at around 0500 UTC July 15 southeast of Gedeokodo Island, Busan area. Car carrier has just left Masan port east of Busan and was underway in route to China. Submarine reportedly was underway to surfaced. Car carrier below bow suffered 0.5 meter long gas. Submarine reported suffered minor, uh, minor damages. Car carrier interrupted her voyage and anchored in Korean waters for investigation. So as moving further, the next news we have is the ITF 6 lakh seafarers impacted by crew change. A very very huge number guys. The International Transport Workers Federation esteems that there are now approximately 6 lakh seafarers which, who all are impacted by crew change crisis. Guys the crisis is very very hard for the seafarers who are you know already in for long of period in the seas. So guys, the International Transport Workers Party estimates that there are now approximately 6 lakh seafarers trapped working aboard ships due to the crew change crisis, cost COVID-19 border and travel restriction and an equal number of unemployed seafarers waiting to join them who are assured. Expanding the figure, the union said that there are over 9,500 ships which are covered by international bargaining forum agreements between the ITF and respective employees. Seafarers on IPF covered ships make up 30.8% of the 1.2 million seafarers that the International Chamber of Shipping estimates make up the worldwide seafaring workforce. By taking the 25% overdue figure from IBF covered ships and extrapolating it to 1.2 million seafarers, uh, seafarers worldwide, there is an estimated 3 lakh seafarers already over, overdue worldwide still working aboard ships matched by another 3 lakh waiting to join ships. Moving further guys, the next news we have is the US aircraft return to South China Sea amid rising tensions. 
So guys, uh, the uh, for the second time in two weeks, the United States has deployed two aircraft carriers in the South China Sea, the US Navy said on Friday, as China and the United States accuse each other of stoking tenses in the region. The USS Nimtis and USS Ronald Reagan carried out operational and military exercises in the waterway between July 4 and July 6 and returned to the region on Friday, according to a US Navy statement. Nimitz and Reagan carrier uh, strike groups are operating in the South China Sea wherever international law allow allows to reinforce our commitment to a free and open Indo-Pacific, a rule-based international order, and to our allies and partners in the region, Rear Admiral Jim Kirk, commander of the Nimtis, said in the statement. So guys, moving further, the next news we have is the tanker attacked 13 crew kidnapped Gulf of Guinea update. Chemical tanker Kuraku trader was attacked at around 1100 UTC July 17 in Gulf of Guinea, 230 nautical miles south of Lagos, Nigeria, while in route from Lome Togo to undefined port. Pirates boarded the tanker and kidnapped 15 crew, according to direct IMB report. They are believed to be of Russian and Ukrainian nationalities. Tanker AIS was off after pirates boarded tanker. She reappeared around 1850 UTC, south of attack po position, moving in the north northern direction at a reduced speed. IMRRA Fleetmon's official vessel risk rating partner risk assessed this tanker as having a green risk rating with a specific risk rating of 32% compared to the fleet average 36%. New risk assessment reports can be purchased via Fleetmon. So guys, moving further, the next news we have is the maritime industry sees increasingly demand for data services. Yes, guys, uh, the data services are, are making a huge demand in maritime industry and uh, this data service provider users with unprecedented analytic capabilities with the right data shipping companies can, for example, create a comprehensive operational maritime overview, manage fuel consumption, predict ETS and cut operational cost while ports uh, can use data to assess risk and improve safety in the port area. So guys, uh, with digitalization gaining traction in the uh, maritime industry as indicated by increasing demand for satellite communication, the use of data services is also rising, according to Ma Maritime Analytics and AIS company Gatehouse Maritime. According to a report by Trusted Business Insights, the market for maritime satellite communication was valued at $2.64 billion in 2018 and is expected to grow with a CAGR of 8.9% from 2019 to 2025. Joel Box sales manager at Gatehouse Maritime observed that demand for satellite communication service is partially driven by a growing interest in data which is critical to the ongoing digital, uh, digital transformation of the maritime industry. So guys that's for it for today. Thank you for watching and hit the subscribe button and the bell button so that you don't miss any video from Marine Thank you guys signing off.